Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Omni Channel Marketer. Today, I have Emma Chozik, Head of Community and Curation at Thing Testing. Hi, Emma. How are you? Hi. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Me too. So why don't you, you know, start by just telling us your own background and then yeah. would love to, you know, dive into a little bit more about what thing testing is for, for our audience. Yeah, absolutely. So my background, I come from kind of working a lot with consumer brands across like tech spaces true consumer product brands. I, you know, like my, my first, I was talking about my first internship in college. I interned for Fuck Jerry, the (laughs) meme account. And so it was like this true introduction to the consumer brand space, especially from like a digital marketing perspective. And from there, like I loved the idea of digital marketing, but I think what it was missing for me was like this connection to the consumer. And, you know, especially on Instagram where like Fuck Jerry's entire brand was basically built, there was that missing link of like, okay, how did like the customer feel about this product? And like, do we get to talk to the customer? And so over time I started, you know, working with different companies that were kind of more connected directly to the the audience. And, you know, whether that was like through live events or online forums. And I think around this same time was when like this role of community didn't exactly exist but it was it was starting to be talked about and people were starting to host like live event series and for me i was like okay cool like live events are awesome but then you become like a party planner and if like the florist doesn't show up that's really stressful to me i think my role now at think testing especially is something that was kind of created like probably within like the year before i even started working at think testing and, you know, the, the context is, is that like I came into thing testing as community lead was that title. And this was really about like, how do we reach who's going to be thing testing's like core demographic. And so I came in as that title and, you know, over time really built up like reaching our users and how do we get them on the platform and excited about what we're building. Yep. So tell me a little bit or tell us more, what is thing testing? Yeah, absolutely. So thing testing started in 2018 as an Instagram account. And not a lot of people know that, but you know, cause now you see obviously the website and the reviews piece of it, but it started in 2018. Our founder Jenny was working for a VC firm in London at the time. And she really started, you know, reviewing brands from a consumer perspective of like, would I pay money for this product and an investor perspective of would I give money to this brand? And it was like this huge boom of consumer brands. It was very difficult, I think, from both perspectives to understand like, okay, cool, this product has awesome branding. Is it any good? Has anyone tested it? And so that's like what her thesis kind of was about. And while she was doing this, she built up a a really solid following of not only um, industry people, so like investors, founders, brand enthusiasts, but also just general consumers were kind of tuning in to be like, okay, are any of these products good? And started receiving DMs from people who were saying like, hey, I wrote this review on this brand's website and they never published it. Like, can you do a review of it? Mm. And it was that moment, I think, where she really realized like, okay, there's actually an issue in this space that she had no idea even existed and she kind of like uncovered accidentally and so built out thing testing's directory first from a like a place of kind of being like this encyclopedia of brands is how i talk about it it was a place where people could learn more about different brands they were seeing online brands could come in claim their pages update their pages add key information um, different founder attributes certifications they had linked to their social media pages and users could come in and learn more. And then, you know, what happened after that was the launch of reviews on thing testing, which has has really been like our core Mm -hmm. mission and aim since then is to be like the place on the internet that you go for honest reviews from real people. Brands hide a lot of reviews and I think consumers are getting smarter and the FTC and different, you know, platforms are actually starting to crack down on this. Brands are getting sued for it. Brands are getting in trouble for it. It's an interesting moment, I think, especially as brands, as sorry, as consumers get smarter and and have a better understanding of like, okay, influencers get paid to say that they love a product. And while that's fine, how do I, as a consumer, find a place to get a full picture of a brand before I buy it? So when it shows up at my door, 
I'm not only excited that it looks great, but it also actually works. And so that's kind of like what the what the thing testing mission is all about. I love that. So you think about the lens of the mission through the consumer. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I totally resonate with that. And so when you're, you know, thinking about building community, you know, who's your customer there? Or, you know, how do you think about who your stakeholders are? Yeah. So one, the we have the brands. I think particularly in my role, I kind of sit in a really interesting place between the user and the brand. So as the head of community and curation, my job is kind of all about how do we surface the best of thing testing or the most interesting or the newest things on thing testing to the consumer or to the the thing testing audience, which the thing testing audience is super interesting because it's like these people that love brands. They're we're not here to like bash brands. We're not we're not here to like take down brands. And I think sometimes that gets mixed up in the conversation of like when you talk about honest reviews online is like, oh, it must be bad things. And that's 1000% not the case. I think the think testing audience cares so much about brands doing well and they want to see brands succeed, but they also want to feel like they got their money's worth and like they got a product that promised to do what it does. The, the stakeholders are really, you know, the consumer. So anyone who's purchasing a product online, we really think of as being like the think testing demographic. We always say we want to be like, what Yelp is to restaurants, thing testing is to brands, what TripAdvisor is to hotels, etc. And how do we get there is by like making all consumers feel like they have a place where their voice is heard online and it's not hidden, it's not cherry picked, we don't surface the best reviews to the top of the page. It's really kind of community led in that like the top reviews on a page show by what is the most helpful, meaning what have other users voted as being helpful reviews or was it submitted by someone who is like the most active user on the on the on the platform but all reviews are instantly published they're not curated not by us not by brands and so we want to be a place where consumers feel like they they get the full picture when they want to make a purchase so tell me more about how you are engaging community like what what does that look like for thing testing yeah so when i started at thing testing in 2021 reviews had not even launched yet it was i was the first community hire and i built out a program called our super tester program which was really supposed to engage you know who are the most active people on thing testing where do we find those people and it, and it turned out to be like these early adopters these people that want to be the first to everything they want to be the first to find out about the brands they want to know about it maybe even before it launches sometimes even before i know about it and they want to test these brands and they want to review these brands. And so engaging the thing testing community is kind of like a 360 thing. It happens both on thing testing. It happens off of thing testing. We have a Slack community for for these most active users where we, you know, we talk about new brands that are launching or we kind of like go more in depth on reviews. And it's really like a conversation. It's it's not so much like led by thing testing. It's really like we put the most active people in a group together and we let them talk and like we're there at you know the same level of user as they are but we'll also share like hey we're thinking about launching this new feature like what do you guys think about it and getting feedback from people who spend the most time on the platform is crucial to us and you know we have a close friends story on instagram where it's obviously a scrappy thing to add people to a, a close friends list but it works and it's you know behind the scenes content we have users who share behind the scenes content of them like demoing products or them going to different, you know, like boutique kind of like shops and and showing what they've spotted there. That 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 makes a ton of sense. And so, you know, as you know, we'll often have you know, we typically have brands on this podcast and, you know, a lot of our listeners are these brands as well and they're thinking about, you know, what's working, you know, how do we be omni-channel, you know, across all channels and, you know, think about that end-to-end customer experience. So wondering if from your perspective, you know, having all of this review data, you know, what are the brands that are getting the good reviews, you know, what are they doing right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think brands that are, brands that are doing right, doing, doing well, are the brands that are like meeting customers where they are. And so whether that's on TikTok, like I think, Obviously, every brand right now is is hot on TikTok and, and wants to be on TikTok. And I think it's an interesting platform because 
you have the ability to reply in a really human way. So if someone comments a question, you can actually reply with a video and talk about it. And it's also not only do you get to reach your current customer, but you also have the opportunity to reach millions of other people who may have never even found out about your product. And so I think it's no longer about like the transaction. You can't just, you know, reach your customer when at the point of purchase or in a transactional email flow after they buy your product. It's about meeting them on these different platforms, whether it's TikTok. I think Tyler Haney's doing an incredible job with Try Your Best is an awesome like loyalty platform. And the brands that I've seen on there, like I see them now everywhere. And I think there's there's a moment where when you ask for feedback from your customer and you make them feel involved in it, not only do they stick around, but I think there's like this, there's this effect of it that they tell their friends about it and they feel more connected about it. So when they get the product in the mail, they're going to post about it. And when it comes from a genuine place, I think it, it's a much, you know, it's a, a way more last, it, it lasts much more the effect of it than than just, you know, asking for a review in a post-purchase email or yeah. asking them to post about it or share it. That makes complete sense. And, you know, how do you think about what has worked in like with thing testing, you know, and then what hasn't worked? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think in the early days of thing testing, it was like, I think it was maybe my first week of thing testing. And I accidentally sent an email out to every single person that was in our beta saying thanks for writing a review. It was like the first week reviews were live and majority of those people had not written a review yet. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm at thing testing for a week and I've ruined everything. And it was, it was really interesting because people, the majority of people did not respond by being like, hey, I haven't written a review yet, what is this? They just responded by doing the action. And this is not to say like, go mess with all your transactional email flows, but I think communication for us has been key. Like mm -hmm. people just wanna, they need to just like hear from us to remember like, oh, I have, you know, Graza olive oil sitting on my counter and I haven't reviewed it yet. And they happen to be looking at it when they open the email. And so touch points of communication have been awesome for us. That was obviously a total mishap and mistake that happened, but it translated and resulted in a really interesting conversation for us internally of like, oh, people just need to hear from us. And ideally about something that an action that they've actually completed, but it, it really was just like a, an, a moment where we were like, okay, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. And experiments for like, we experiment all the time. I think we know people really want to get access to like pre-launch brands and knowing about brands. And so thing drop has been a huge thing for us. We launched in 2021, I launched a program where it was basically brands were kind of asking us, okay, how do we reach the thing testing audience? How do we get more reviews on our page? It was this constant question of like, how do we get more reviews? And I tried it with a couple of brands in a, in a reviewer newsletter that we had at that point. And it really worked. Like not, it was a, it was kind of like a perfect storm for everyone. It was a win across the board in that brands got reviews, consumers got to try products, not only pretty much right at launch, but also at like a 70 to 80% off discount on the product. And thing testing got to be the place that these two, you know, like these two people came together, the brand and the customer. And so that's been really exciting for us. But I think there's also like, especially at a startup, there's things you have to think about where it's like, okay, if something's not working, you just have to like move past it quickly. I think a lot of times, you know, you really want something to work. So you're like, okay, let's just like try at it. And like, maybe if we just change this little thing and sometimes you just have to be like, it's not working, let's move past it and not waste any more time or resources on it. So being quick to like move along too. Yeah, that makes complete sense. And so you talked about, you know, the early brands being, you know, with thing dropping, a you know com important component do you find that also later stage brands are on the platform and then you know second but related question in the way that you talked about this being the yelp um that yelp is to restaurants do you you know see thing testing existing and having a profile for every brand that exists yeah absolutely i think thing testing when it started was very niche in this direct to consumer space you know the, the CBD beverages of the world and 
like the Warby Parkers and the Glossiers. And I think we're moving towards a place where any brand that sells a physical product is going to have a page on think testing. It just is about how it's sort how it's surfaced to users, right? So if you're someone that doesn't care about beverage brands or doesn't care about, you know, Coca-Cola, for example, Coca-Cola might very well have a page on think testing, but you might never see it because think testing at some point is going to have an algorithm that learns what you like the same way that every other social platform does. And not to say that think testing is going to become a social platform, but I do think there's this element that plays into everything where we want to see the things that we either like or things that a platform thinks we're going to like. But at this point in time, really any any brand can have a page on think testing. It, the requirements to have a page are that you need to have a physical checkout. So you need to be a product that's selling online with a physical checkout. It's just about the time in which it takes, you know, for the brand to get approved to think testing and then also how it's surfacing to users. Makes complete sense. So let's shift gears to our topical focus about, you know, something that you're you feel passionately about. Yeah, definitely. So I I grew up in a mid-century contemporary home in Connecticut, and I am super passionate about design, which is kind of like a side interest, which obviously relates back to think testing. There are so many design brands that have launched, especially I think in this COVID, post-COVID world where everyone's spending so much more time at home. But I recently built my first chair, designed oh, wow. fully and built a chair, which was like a really crazy thing to do. I, um, I had this Instagram account and I, I still have it. It's called Sitting at Home. And I basically curate chairs from, you know, iconic designers. And I, I think part of it was working at Think Testing where I was talking to amazing founders all the time and people that knew so much about the space in which not only they were passionate about, but like the industry that they worked in. And for me, I was like, okay, here I am just like sitting on my couch, curating chair photos. And I have no idea how to build a chair. Like I have to build a chair. And it became this little bit of an obsession of like, I'm going to build a chair. And I'm looking over now because I can see my chair in the corner of my room. But I think design is a, is a really interesting place. And yeah, that's something that I'm super passionate about. I love that. What did you learn in designing and building that chair? Yeah, I think working for working for a online platform, pretty much any mistake you make is reversible. So, you know, if you're designing a social asset in Figma and you make a mistake, you can just delete it or you could, you know, command Z it. If you're writing a social caption and you post it and it goes live, you can edit it. And so these decisions that you make when you're building something in the physical world, you have to be really intentional and thoughtful about it, but you also can't drive yourself crazy over it. So like, for example, the legs, I wasn't sure if I wanted them to be like straight edge around it. And I went back and forth on it for like two days. And my friend who was helping me build it was like, just make a decision. Like, it's going to be great either way. You designed it. And it was like this, oh, okay, like I just have to be confident in the decision mm-hmm. that I'm making, which it really does play into honestly everything you do. I think it's just different when you're building online and you can change something if you decide to. Yep. Well, I mean, I think it's an interesting perspective to you for you to have working in a community where one of your key stakeholders are these physical product brands to now have built something yourself because one I think you have to have more empathy you know after after going through that process but I mean one of my favorite things about our job is that we get to talk to these cool brands every day and I think that they have such this incredible product design vision so that that's a I I really resonate with that yeah me as well respect for all the founders who are building physical things absolutely Um, Okay, so shifting to our our lightning round. Yeah. Favorite omni-channel brand? Okay, so right now I think I have to say Maud. They just launched in Sephora, and they're the first sexual wellness brand there, so we got to give it to them. They're amazing. They are one of our customers. Love, Maud. Eva is such, so amazing. Thing that you wish you could change about our industry? Yeah, I think right now there's, like, a lot of, like, counterproductive sort of, like, call-outs and competition between brands that I think – is just not helpful so yeah yeah i think like rising tides for all yeah favorite podcast how long gone Hmm. what's that about 
it's these two guys in LA and it's basically just like a culture podcast they kind of just like shoot the shit with people cool love it yeah favorite newsletter Emily Sundberg's or newsletter it's about it's like a brand and culture newsletter Hmm. okay great I don't know that one favorite social media channel I think I'm holding out for Instagram okay not not TikTok I, I like TikTok, but I just, like, lose time there. Instagram does feel productive to me still. Yeah, I understand that. Favorite book? My dad gave me How to Win Friends and Influence People as my first business book, so I think that's still a, a classic. So did my dad. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> um, and then event that you're planning on going to this year that you're excited about? Well, I live in Miami, and obviously I'm super into design, so I always get excited for Design Week here. Mm. Will you go to Art Basel? I will. Yeah, it's like the whole – I mean, the whole Art Basel Design Week is my favorite time here. It's all connected. It's all great. I'm, you know, curious, in your role um, of community, are you attending different brand events, or, like, you know, how does that become part of your role? Yeah, absolutely. I mean – I think by being in this industry, a lot of my friends are founders at this point too. And so anything I can do to support what they're currently building and working on is great. I think in Miami, especially, there's a lot of camaraderie around brands and and people that are building brands. And so I am always going to different events that are popping up. It seems like people are just building events like in their sleep because to your question, I actually don't even know what some of the events I'll be going to, but I'm sure they're all going to be amazing. Yeah. I mean, I think that we're all on like an event kick because we, for two years, could not go to any. And yeah. so it's like the being back in person again, it's like, it's so nice. I so, love it. Me too. Any, um, anyway, Emma, where can our listeners connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at mcho41. Amazing. Um Thank you so much, Emma. It was so good chatting with you. Uh, Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It was nice to chat. If you liked this podcast, follow me and The Bridge page on LinkedIn and Twitter for hot takes and tactical advice. If you really loved today's episode, we'd love a review on the podcasting platform of your choice, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Thanks for listening.